I think it's really cool just because it's like a legacy play. I'm doing something that will be here long after we're no longer here. And so this property will benefit from that, which I, I just think that that's kind of a unique way to look at it and a neat thing to be able to do. This dark line right here represents the char that was left in a trench that I did from last year. And you can see everything below it is much lighter in color, which is the undisturbed soil beneath it. But if we follow that out, it gets much thicker in this area. I left more char in this particular area for some reason. And then when I backfilled over the top of it, this is the fill that went back in over the top of that trench. But it's pretty cool. It tells a story. But we're going to make a new story in the trench that I'm standing in with all of this material out here. As well as once I finish with that, I've got that pile off in the distance staring over that direction. So I've got my material separated out over here. I've got lighter material, which I'm going to utilize to initially get the fire started. And then I'm going to start adding heavier material on top of there once I get a good bed of coals established. And then I'll start successively adding lighter material. The heavier material is going to take a lot longer in order to burn. I want that toward the bottom of the pit. And then I'll start adding the lighter material as we build up. When you're making biochar in a trench, essentially what you have is a three-sided box with the top of the box being open to the atmosphere. In order to exclude oxygen from the material that's burning within the pit, you need to successively add fresh material over the top of the superheated material down below, which essentially becomes like the lid excluding oxygen so pyrolysis can occur rather than combustion. I primarily do my biochar kind of in this in this area, but I mean, I could do a pit anywhere here. Just take the tractor and dig a, a trench and wherever I accumulate my biomass, I've got a whole nother pile behind me that can be broken down and, and put into a pit. So So once burn season is over, it's generally about May 15th here, is they'll put a burn ban in place. And then all the biomass that I either intentionally remove from the vegetation here or something that just naturally drops throughout the year, winds up going into one of a couple of piles that I, that I work from. So uh, most of this material is, some of it's almost a year old. So see how this is starting to turn that white ash, Rebecca? So I'm gonna keep adding to the top of this now that I've got a, a good bit of heat down in there. And I know that it might not look like there's a lid on this, but believe me, with the amount of material that's there, the stuff toward the bottom is having the oxygen excluded from it. The beautiful thing about biochar is it's what's considered carbon negative. And so what that means is that there's more carbon that's going to be sequestered than what's going to be released in the atmosphere during its production. One thing I'll make note of is it's kind of important before you get your pile started, make sure that you do have your material somewhat arranged, at least in small enough sizes and shapes that are going to fit and lay within the trench. Because you can see how rapidly the fire starts to get going. And then if you're not prepared for that, you can kind of get, get behind the curb, if you will. But this is an outstanding property cleanup activity and if you have more than a few people actually helping you with the project you can do a lot to clean up your property and I can assure you that the material that was first laid in this trench has been fairly well excluded from oxygen and right now it's just off-gassing it's pushing off all of those volatiles 
outside and contributing to what you see here is visible fire. One of the main differences between the char that's going to be made here and the char that's made out of there is you're going to have, no matter what you do, you're going to have a much higher concentration of ash. This may be beneficial to you if in fact you have soil that is acidic. As this burns down, you're going to see white ash coming over the top. The stuff down below that's underneath this coals that you can see visibly, they're not going to have any ash associated with that because right now, it's just forcing off those gases. So again, there will be some impurities left in, there will be some residuals, um, more so than what's in that retort. We've been able to take a pretty sizable pile here today and reduce it to this trench. And uh, right now it's doing exactly what I want it to do. Eventually all of this will get crushed and then it'll end up in the chicken yard where it'll start the inoculation process. Water retention and microbial habitat are the two primary things that I look for when I'm putting char back into the soil. It can help with decompaction, helps with improving the tilth of your soil, soil remediation, water remediation. These are all things that biochar can possibly do for you depending on how you want to utilize it. Yeah, it's a long-term process. It's not really something that you're doing with the expectation that you do this today and your soil is going to be amazing tomorrow. Um, there's there's a, a process of patience that is required in soil building. And this is just for me, another step in adding to that soil building process. Most of what you see tree wise is trees that I planted in the last 20 years. And so that's really the only or organic matter other than what animals might drop or just this rangeland. So I'm just checking to see kind of what the burn was like. And the chances are there's going to be material down at the bottom of this that's still going to have to probably be processed again. It may not be completely processed, but that's okay. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and extinguish. Um, this has been able to burn down for probably, we're looking at, we've been standing here for what, maybe 25 minutes, maybe half hour-ish. And come in here a little bit closer, Rebecca, let me show you. What you see on top is a bunch of white ash. And as I peel this back, you're going to see that it's black. Because that's been excluded from oxygen, primarily you just have char in there. And as I reach down and feel, it's pretty well... There's going to be some heavier material again down at the bottom, but I've got a pretty good batch of char here. I'm going to go ahead and extinguish the entire top of this, and then we'll see what she looks like. This char that I just made will most likely be added to livestock bedding areas where the livestock will be able to walk over the top of it. They will do the crushing, and then the bedding will be added directly to the compost in the chicken yard where it will finish the inoculation process. It's pretty well processed and it's going to last for who knows how long, possibly, you know, hundreds of years, maybe thousands of years. We just don't know, <laughs> right? None of us are going to be here to know what they found in the Amazon. We're talking thousands of years and it's still there. It's still, you know, contributing to the soil. And so, again, I, I think it's really cool just because it's like a legacy play. I'm doing something that will be here long after we're no longer here. And so this property will benefit from that, which I, I just think that that's kind of a unique way to look at it and a neat thing to be able to do, you know. Get this dug out today and I'll be putting it over into a super sack for storage. I probably got somewhere close to about a quarter of a cubic yard out of that first batch. And with what's remaining in this pile off in the distance, I'll probably be able to get another three quarters of a yard or so, probably start that project here in another couple days. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.